Friends, have you ever purchased a revolver and you loved everything about it other than the fact that you couldn't hit the side of a barn to save your life? Well, that's what happened to me with my Smith & Wesson Model 629 and 44 Magnum. And I'm here to tell you how I found a factory defect uh, that happened in the manufacturing that was causing my Acri issues and how Smith & Wesson customer service performed in handling these issues and getting my revolver back on site. But before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like this video. It's what keeps the channel going. Thank you. So this is my Marlin 1894 and 44 Magnum. And it is the perfect little bush gun. And I wanted to get a companion revolver to go with it. And well, I grew up watching Clint Eastwood playing Dirty Harry and seeing him on the screen with the Smith & Wesson Model 29. It left a huge impression on me as it seemed like it was the holy grail revolvers when I was a kid. But by already having a 617 and several 686 revolvers, I chose the Model 629 as it was in stainless steel and a better choice for living in Florida. Here's the revolver in the original unrepaired condition. I purchased the classic 6 inch model 629, not the more common version with the full underlug barrel like you see here. Now the reason I chose this model was first of all, it looked a lot more like the original Dirty Harry model 29. And I thought it looked a lot more sexy with the rounded barrel and the way the end of the barrel and crown was completely rounded. It just, uh, it just appealed to me. I thought it was a better looking gun. But the gun has some serious accuracy issues. At first I thought it was just me getting used to the big 44 Magnum cartridge, which I wasn't used to. I was shooting the American Eagle, and they are notorious for being hot loads. But I have owned and shot numerous 357 Magnums for over 30 years now. So I am somewhat familiar with revolvers. So I started inspecting this gun for all the common things like uh, the cylinder tuning, check the forcing cone, check the spacing on it, checked it for cracks, and uh, checked it for a canted barrel. And uh, when I finally got to the crown, that's when I noticed the problem. Something just wasn't right there, so I took some some photos with my phone and blew them up and printed them out on my printer and if you see here you can see there's a definite burr first I thought maybe it was just some lead or something on there so I cleaned it very well and uh, no this is a, a factory defect when they machined the barrel uh, they didn't finish the crown like they should have they should have used some kind of reamer or something in there and put a proper chamfer on this. So I called up Smith & Wesson's customer service and I shared these photos with them and they agreed that the crown was left unfinished. They immediately sent me out an email that included a return label and all the instructions needed to ship this revolver back to them for repair. And I did not send the gun out in the original box as per their instructions. I found a suitable cardboard box and wrapped the gun completely in bubble wrap and secured it in the box so it would not shake around or anything. Now customer service said that it could take six or eight weeks before I got my 629 back. So I picked up another in this three inch configuration and I fell in love with the beautiful rosewood grips. That is before I went out and shot it. It tore my hand up like you would not believe. This is just 20 rounds or so. Um, so that gun went in the safe. And I actually got the uh, revolver back from Smith & Wesson before the end of the fifth week. Um, everything looked good. Everything looked clean. I think they did a thorough going over of the gun. And... Um, 
we check out that crown, we can see that there is no longer a burr. Everything is chamfered correctly and it uh, looks beautiful. Now some will say that the crown won't affect accuracy. And I'm going to tell you, they're dead wrong. This gun now shoots amazing. It is now one of my most accurate handguns, at least in the top three. And let me tell you, it has some stiff competition. So now, as a companion gun to my 1894 Bush gun, it's going to need a holster. So, looking around, I ended up choosing the Galco Dual Action Outdoorsman Holster. I purchased it directly from Galco. It's a right hand carry and can be worn strong side or cross draw, depending on where you place the belt. Two slots for traditional carry, and then there's another one up here that you would use for cross draw. It's completely open at the end for drainage and it has an adjustable tension and a flap here to secure the gun in while you're in the woods. Uh, it's a nice holster. I like it. Fits the gun good. Well that's going to wrap up this video my friends. I hope you found this video informative and uh, you're subscribed to the channel and like the video and share it if you can also. Please check out my playlist. I got two knife giveaways right now, a bench made and a spider code bird. Find those videos. Uh, Stayed on the video. I want this knife and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you can be a winner. Thanks for watching.